Over the past four decades, Twyla Tharp has transformed American dance as both a performer and choreographer. Her work transcends traditional definitions of the medium, combining elements of ballet and modern dance. After graduating from Barnard College in 1963, she joined the Paul Taylor Dance Company. Soon after, she struck out her own, forming what would eventually become Twyla Tharp Dance. After more than 20 years, she dismantled the company in 1988. She has since concentrated on her freelance work for such companies as the American Ballet Theater and the New York City Ballet. Recently, she has announced the formation of a new company, which made its debut at this summer's American Dance Festival. I am pleased to have her back on this show. Welcome back. Thank you. How was that? That's pretty good, wasn't it? That was excellent. You know, we, he hit the high points and none of the low points, wherever they were. I don't know where they are. Um, so why are you doing this? Oh. I mean, you, you dismantled this company because you didn't want to be an administrator and all this other stuff, right? There were a thousand and one reasons. Why you dismantled in 88. Right. And here we are a mere 12 years later. 12 years of age. And you're up at, you're doing it again. That's right. Why? You want the real truth? I, yeah, no, just... <laughs> <laughs> okay, look. Pull my leg. Tell me what. There, there, are, there are a thousand reasons, and they were all very valid and also quite small. The real true reason is yeah. because 12 years ago, my darling, I was not willing to say, this is my life, here I am, the end will come. In other words, it, it, to move oh. forward 12 years ago, I would have had to make an investment that said, yes, a school, yes, a studio, yes, we're here, and yes, this is my life. I wasn't quite ready to do that. Now, I am ready to do that. Okay, so in your mind, you have finally figured out that your life is a dancer and a choreographer. No, I always knew that my life was a dancer and a choreographer. Now, it is also quite clear that in order to do particularly the choreographer component, since the dancer component has been put to bed, shall we say, that's a nice <laughs> way of putting it, I think, <laughs> uh, that uh, really to m move ahead as a choreographer, I must go back to what I did with my first instinct, which is to direct a repertory company and to make that commitment and to know that I am building a foundation for the rest of my life. Okay, but let me just understand that. Why, why couldn't you make that commitment in 12 years because ago? Because who wants to look at the end? I did not want to acknowledge that. Uh, now I can do that. Now I'm, now I'm prepared to do that, and the 12 years in between have given me a range and a depth of experience that does not allow me to have any sense of having missed anything. What are we going to call the company? Twyla Tharp Dance. Okay. <laughs> Same as ever. <laughs> that shows you what we learned. Uh, I also, in all fairness, have to say uh, that part of that adventure was to address the classical ballet. The you know, so-called modern dance and so-called classical ballet yeah. have been separated, and that having come up more clearly through the ranks of modern work, uh, I didn't have the authenticity as a classical composer that I now have. Uh, and also that I really wanted to learn how to use large masses of people. I could not afford companies of 120 dancers. So I went there to learn how to build choruses, which I learned. Are you finding out that the 12 years you spent in exile, yes. that you couldn't do all the things you wanted to do, and that it was rather confining for you working under the umbrella of either ABD, ABT or else the New York City Ballet? No, I could do everything I wanted to do. I just couldn't do it nearly as well as I wanted to do it. What does that mean? Uh, I think that it's important to say, Charlie, that I have no intention of being uh, negative about anything. That my experiences of the past have only come to accrue to the better sense of my overall vision. However, that there are times when if your uh, priorities and your vision is not absolutely yeah. paramount. It's not going to work. And in all fairness to the large repertory companies of this world, they have other areas that they have to tend to. Right. It's simple. How difficult is it to do this? To do which? Put together a company again. Uh, well, it's, it's interesting because it is the second time I've done this and the first time I knew nothing wa about what was involved and this time I know a great Everything. deal about what's involved. <laughs> and in the last uh, three weeks, uh, I, I didn't, again, in a way, I, both times, neither time did I really say, okay, I'm going to do this. I just did it. Uh, and this last time we very quickly formed ourselves together as dancers working on new material and then once that was done and we were... 
uh, premiered at ADF, American Dance Festival. Uh, I've been back in the city for three weeks. I believe I've found a studio space, which I looked for almost 20 years to find a studio space and never did. I believe I may have found one in the last two and a half weeks. Uh, I now will have representation for the company that will book them next year. What I want, the ideally designed program, is three separate four-week tours, both here and abroad, and I believe that's in place. I believe that I probably have in place a first maybe three or four week season in the city, and that will be expanded in the following year to two, so we'll have two resident home base presentational seasons. Uh, so I would say things are going along well. There's no dance company today run by a woman either, is it? That's not quite true, even no. though I say it. Well, okay. It's well, almost true. Uh, the fact else? of the matter is that the Paris Opera is run by Brigitte Lefebvre. She was a dancer. She is not a studio choreographer. She does not really rehearse the dancer. She is more of an executive director than, than an artistic director, although she holds both positions. Uh, however, she is the only one worldwide who heads a uh, you know, major institution. What or who has been the most significant impact on you? As a at dancer, what stage? At what well, in the stage? last 15 years. Uh, in the last 15 years, I think that probably I was um, trying to wriggle out of that position anyway. If you're really saying who have I looked up to, who I've looked up to are Graham and Balanchine are who I've looked up to. Uh, I was very fortunate to know Not Jerry bad. Robbins. Martha or Graham and George Balanchine. What did I if say? You're going to look up, didn't you say Graham and Balanchine? Yeah. I said if you're going to look up to somebody, that's not a bad place to start. No, I think that it's important to uh, size up against the absolutes, and for me they were. Uh, and certainly for the first 15 years of my career, uh, I was always very aware of them. Uh, I think that one of the reasons in particular uh, that the... Um, my essay into the world of ballet was an essay into the world of Balanchine, uh, and not so much to study his work because I've never really done that, but just to see how I felt I really could stack up to it. Uh, and my conclusion is a work called The Brahms Haydn that was premiered uh, in Washington this spring with ABT. Uh, it's for a full course of eight couples, uh, two chorus couple leaders, and five front couples, and I think I do well. It stacks up well. Then. I believe it does. But it's taken me, let me be humble here to say, 30 years to do it. It takes 30 years. It took you 30 it years. It took me 30 years. Actually, 35. I started in 65, right? That's 35 So you couldn't have done ago. it. I could not have done, done it until last spring. You couldn't have done spring. it earlier. I could not have done it until last spring. That's amazing. You, you needed what? Experience? Just time? What? I needed to learn the rules of composition. I needed to learn how I could extend them. I needed to learn how you both weld together movement and keep it independent. I needed to learn how to orchestrate. I needed to learn when one brings in the principles first and then pushes the chorus from behind and when one brings the chorus in and opens for the principles. It's a very different thing. I had to learn what questions to ask. Well, what did you, well, like, give me that. What does that mean? It sounded good. Why it did sure you have did. To push on? It did sound good. I mean, but I think, and, yeah. and it's clearly true. Yeah. Well, look, the uh, the biggest issues probably are quite simple. I did also fairly since I've seen you last a, a piece to Beethoven's Diabelli Variations, which is of course his last set of variations, and it's a huge undertaking. That and the Goldberg Variations are probably the two largest sets in the piano repertoire. Uh, and in order to do this, I had to have a very simple realization because the Beethoven was so broad and so all inclusive, I would have been lost had I not had a very simple something to hold on to myself to vary as my theme. And what I came to realize was there are really only two courses of action here. One is to chase, whether you're in front or behind, and the other is to come at each other, and that's it. So this became A, and this became B. <laughs> oh, I and see. I had a great time I then, understand and it now. made perfect sense. Oh, that's great. Uh, when you say you combine classical and modern. You said that I didn't. Not true or true? Uh, I see, have always thought that dance has a root, and that's in the human body, and the human body can move, and that anyone isolating certain camps and saying this belongs here and this belongs here was misguided. 
because it's all about the movement of the human body. Yeah. So don't talk about it. No. This being my, because no. you're always identified as let's a modern not, dancer. Let's not claim. You're always let's identified let's as a modern dancer. I know that, and there are techniques to be learned. <laughs> yes. There's another side to the coin. <laughs> <laughs> the techniques to be learned in the classical ballet are real, and it's been the the vocabulary of the classical ballet has been developed for over you know 300 years. The techniques of the so-called modern world are, in a way, much more recent, but in a way, much more ancient because they've been practiced since the beginning of time in tribal dance, in the beginnings of theater, et cetera, et cetera. Why are you grinning so much? Oh, because I'm just thinking. You're having you know too why? much fun. I am. I'm just thinking and the exile has done nothing to her spirit. Well, it has not know, deadened her spirit. As long as you know you're going home, you can learn a lot from the Egyptians, right? <laughs> yes, that's true. So that's why I was smiling. I'm just so, I was amused at how this wonderful spirit is still there. You are still as feisty as you have always been, and that's why I love you. Thank you. Got it? Got it. Okay. This is what you said about yourself. The reason I became a dancer is because I asked myself at a certain point, what do you do best? And I said, dance. And then I said, well, that's a stupid choice to make. There's no career to be made in dance. This is really foolish. And I said, too bad. This is what I do best, and this is what I'm going to do. Because in a way, I owe it to whatever, whomever, wherever I come from to do that. The commitment is ever absolute, and that is what faith is about. Well said. So, exactly. I was going to say the same thing. That's almost a creed for you, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is. And I do believe that, and I do believe that it's my responsibility to try as much as I can to, whenever I do work, augment that which I've been given to become that which can be for everybody. Now, here's what the New York Times said about your evolution as a choreographer. The tantrum-like solos... Oops. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> when is this? That erupted in the 1970s and early 80s uh -huh. have yielded to symbolic harmony. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> but do you agree with that, too? For sure. You know, not many tantrums anymore? <laughs> I'm just thinking about what is tantrum I'm mean? Not, I don't know either. So I'm, I mean, if you're talking about bursts of energy, no, right. we have that. If you're talking about outrage and flood and indignity, we have that. If you're right. talking about pettiness and attempts to alter that which cannot be altered, we don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell me where you assess your place at the moment in terms of your own evolution? As you said, I can now think about. Well, here's how I do it. The 20th century is over. It's a closed book. Therefore, it can be looked at somewhat objectively. Uh, and I would say that of my repertory, a piece I did in 1969 called The Fugue uh, has real importance uh, in terms of defining what dance can accomplish. It's a dance that happens in silence and it's about counterpoint and about how dance is its own construct. It does not require narrative, it does not require music, it is its own construct. A piece that was done in the mid-70s called Deuce Coop uh, will also have a place of prominence because it was the first actual welding simultaneously of what was called a modern dance company with what was called a ballet company. Although Graham and Balanchine had done earlier a work together, she did Mary Queen of Scots and he did episodes, of, but they worked independently. They did not work together. Uh, and I did with Deuce Coop, and I started there to weld a technique that involved components of both trainings. Uh, I suspect that push will be important because of Misha. Uh, it will be a defining role in his career. Uh, in the West. Um, wow. There is a piece called Baker's Dozen that will be important because it just is uh, a very good piece. Uh, it's a very good piece because I had a great company and because we've been through a lot together. Uh, and because I had just had some horrible experiences in my life and I pulled way back and I was very focused when it was made. So it just has its own life outside of context. Uh, a piece called In the Upper Room, which has a Philip Glass score, will be important because it introduces actually a third component into the stage, which is yoga, in a very real way, and because it has an empower and a dynamic that of all the pieces of this century, none 
has more clearly or, or more strongly. Uh, and the Brahms, the Brahms, the new variations, which is on the cusp of the last century, but I'll throw it over since it's in 2000, it gets to go back because I think that structurally, architecturally, it's extremely clear. When will New York audiences get a chance to see it? Uh, in the spring, it will be back at the Met. It's too large to put on the stage at City Center. It just won't fit. I thank you for coming. Thank it you. It's great to see you again. That's, That's a pretty good assessment of one's life's work that well, you just gave me. Yeah, I couldn't do it if the century weren't over. Because you know what? what? It's totally artificial and arbitrary. And you know what? What? It's not over yet. Ah! Thank you. Thank you. Twyla Tharp, we'll be right back. Stay with us.